Hey everyone, Christopher Beast, and today I'm going to be talking about a new upcoming coding language called Mojo, and Mojo is currently in beta, and I was lucky enough to get access to it, so I feel like I should just make a short little video talking about the pros, the cons, and really what I'm noticing regarding this language. <laughs> So it is currently under development, being made by Module. They seek to add more attributes to Python while also offering heavy backwards compatibility with the language regarding Python. In its simplest form, the language has heavy connections to Python. However, at higher degrees, it offers some new unique features. Much of what I'm going to be talking about today is going to be those new features, but much like, just to show off that it's white Python, you can just use the normal print command just like Python or the normal commands just like Python. And for the classic hello world, you can just do print and then you can run it. And just like in Python, it will print. So we're not really here. You're not really here to look at Python. You're here to look at what this new coding language can offer. You can uh, sign up for a demo on this website that I will now be putting on the screen. It's also going to be in the description. So if you just go to that website, you'll be able to sign up for a beta. You just have to give an email and then they will reach out and message you with a link for this beta. So you can give it a shot yourself. So what can we do with this? Well, first things first, the primary difference is the ability to set and work with immutable variables. Um, and this can be done easily using the keyword let. So let's say you want to set a value to pi. So we can say let pi equal 3.14. And then we can print pi. Ah. I don't want to print yet. I want to print pi. And if we run that, it will print pi. But let's say we try and change this value. Now you shouldn't be changing pi's value, but if you try to, and you set pi to 22 here, it will not work because it will be immutable variable because you set it as a let value. It's pretty much like constant values in C and the C library. Aside from this, you can kind of change this if you want to be able to change the values. I mean, that's kind of against the whole point here but you can set instead it to a variable. So if I set variable people to equal zero, ah, typing all over the place. And then if I do people plus equals one, and then if I print people, I will get one. So as you can see, if you want to switch this out, you can just switch it back to a variable, but the entire point of the let function is to create an immutable variable. We can use this in the combination of defining a function. So if we wish to define a function, let me pull up one on the screen real quick, that uses immutable and mutable variables, we can do so with this newfound um, really language. Uh, this can be used specifically. So if we want to define, for example, um, circumference of a circle, we can do so. There we go. So that will compile uh, this little f32 is just reclassifying it as a float and that will all compile and would return if you to use it as a function would return your circumference. So that's just a little demonstration of having these immutables. You probably want this to be immutable uh, and how you could use it in a function and why it's kind of important. Uh, the other major thing this language offers is the usage of structs and anyone from the C libraries definitely understands these things. These would be basically classes, but you have lots more immutable objects with them. So basically it's going to be a much more static class. And this is an example of using a struct here that basically is going to, um, in this example, result in uh, if the two are equal to each other or if one's greater than the other. So, we also can use uh, this let and returns and these, these static functions to try and test whether or not and, and use very static strong typing. And there's a reason I will show an example of that. So in here, 
if you uncomment this line here, which I was already uncommented, is going to cause a compile error because in this example, my pair is going to return an int here when it should be returning a bool. And this just really creates a strong classing so you're getting the type of data that you want to be getting here. Continuing, um, I want to show off a struct with this. So if you really in uh, Python, if you're someone that's aware of C libraries, you have object overloading, which is very useful, uh, but it's not the most type sensitive in Python. It uses autos in Python. The Mojo language offers a way to use type sensitive operations to object o uh, operation overload with relative safety here. And this is an example from Mojo that really shows that. Uh, in this example, if you provide it with an imaginary number, which would be a float, then it will return a complex number that has one. If you do not give it a complex uh, imaginary number, then it will just not set one. So that's just an example of that there. Now let's uh, continue deeper. The the fn function, as you see in that in that one I just showed off is being used. And you may be questioning, well, what is, what's the difference between FN and DEF? Or what, what do you use one way you use the other? Is this something just for Mojo? So for people who need something that needs very specific classing and very specific type sensitivity, that is what the FN in Mojo is used for. Um, Mojo states the following distant differences are between DEF and FN. In FN, arguments default to being immutable. In FN, argument variables require a specific type specification. Implicit declarations of local variables is disabled, so all locals must be declared. This catches name typos and dovetails with the scoping provided by wet and far. Both support raising exceptions, but this must be explicitly done in an FN with the raises function effect, placed after the function argument list. Granted, this all makes FN a bit more complex to use, but it certainly allows for greater control of the code. This is a standard overview of some of the functions that Moho offers, and Mojo is still in development, and my time with it has honestly been quite short. So explaining some of its more complex features, even with the help of their guides, would likely result in me misstating something, and I don't intend on misinforming all y'all. Overall, I think Mojo is a pretty interesting concept, essentially an upgrade to Python that allows it to handle some of the more delicate code management that the language currently can't. And personally, as someone who primarily codes in C, C++, and C Sharp, this isn't the solution to help, but Python can be upgraded, and this is a good show for Python coders of a way to make their language even better, even stronger, and it's certainly, I think it's a very solid idea. It's a friendly syntax that might be worth your time. Uh, really, this is all I've got for you all today. This has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.